Now folks, it's Ron with Ideal. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a back-to-back -back bend in a half-inch piece of EMT conduit here using a hand conduit bender from Ideal. A back-to-back -back bend is uh, when we need to make a second stub bend typically in a length of conduit to produce a U-shape in that piece of conduit to fit a, between a couple obstructions. Or you could possibly use it to make an S-shape out of the conduit as well in case you need to say, turn down, say, add down a wall. So you can use this bin for conduit that runs across the floor or ceilings, which turns up or down that wall. Now it's really just two stub bins in that length of conduit to, that have been bent to fit that application, okay? Without having to cut and fit multiple pieces of conduit together to actually make that happen. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use the catalog number 74-026 ductile iron uh, conduit bender here from Ideal. Now, ductile iron benders are typically referred by the professionals as they'll last longer than aluminum bender heads here, which are lighter in weight, but they're also a little less durable. Now, after the first stub bend, 90 degree stub bend has been made in that piece of conduit, and again, it's just a basic stub bend, step one is to determine the length between the two obstructions and make the marks on your conduit. So to do that, we're going to determine the length between, between here and the, the back of the second bend here, okay? And it could be between two obstructions or from the outside edges of a couple knockouts on some boxes. Now, in my example, that's going to be 30 inches. So I'm going to measure from the outside edge of this piece of conduit here and make a mark at 30 inches on the conduit, which I've already actually done. And that mark is the back of the second bend, okay? Now, contractors typically are going to use a pencil to mark the conduit so it can be erased, you know, somewhere down the road. Here I'm going to use a permanent marker uh, so I can see it in the mark. I'm going to mark the conduit all the way around the conduit so the mark doesn't get lost in the bender head. Now, step two is to line that mark up with the tip of the star you'll find in the middle of the bender head here or shoe, okay? And that star is, indicates the back of this second bend, okay? And you're going to want to also make sure that the hook of the bender is facing away from the first bend, so the bender's going in the right direction, so to speak, to be able to make this U-shape out of this uh, particular piece of conduit. And step three is to uh, lay that conduit on the ground. And so <clears throat> I'm going to firmly hold a little pressure against the handle here, so the marks are not going to slip in the, in the, in the, con the conduit's not going to slip on me as I lay it to the ground. I'm going to apply some firm pressure to the uh, back of the conduit with this one foot here, okay? Now, the next step is to carefully line up the first 90 degree bend you made up with the second 90 we're going to make here, okay? And if the two are not aligned properly, you'll end up with what they call a dog leg. And I can use the bender handle to kind of help align those two up and, and, and make that as straight as I can. And anytime you've got two or more bends going on in a piece of pipe, the potential for that dog leg exists. And if the bends aren't aligned properly, that creates kind of a problem in the wall when you go to install it and it doesn't make for a professional looking bend either. Okay, now that I've got the uh, marks all lined up and the bends are aligned together, step four is to actually make the bend. Now to do that, I'm going to uh, lower my body weight a little bit here and get my center of gravity down and then I'm going to step with my other foot on the serrated ed uh, edge on the heel on the back of that uh, bender head. Okay, now, we're going to use constant firm pressure and bend the conduit to 90 degrees using the bender head or the shoe. Now, when do you know you're at 90 degrees there? Well, the answer is a little experience goes a long way here. Now, luckily, the uh, bender handle here is flared on one end here. So if you've underbent or overbent that piece of uh, conduit or that stub, you can tweak it one way or another. And you can also use that to help straighten out any dog leg you might actually have in this piece of conduit after you've bent it. Now remember, constant heavy foot pressure is critical to keep the conduit in the bender groove and to prevent any kinked or wrinkled conduit at the end of the day there, okay? So let's take the accuracy of this particular bender and let's measure this distance between the outside edges of this, these two pieces or this one piece of conduit here. Now as you can see, that measures right around 30 inches and it's pretty accurate bend. So remembering this technique can be used anytime a second stub bend is needed in a length of conduit. And knowing how to make a back-to-back -back bend quickly and efficiently will make those jobs run that much smoother and add value to what you can do as an electrician on that job site. Now again, electricians don't bend the conduit and then cut it to the right length. Once they know how to use a bender correctly, the conduit is the correct length and fit for that particular job they're dealing with. 
And a good quality hand conduit bender here, like this one from Ideal, will provide accurate, professional looking bends that electricians expect when they're on the job sites. Hey, if you want to learn more about the line of hand conduit benders from Ideal, please visit our website or contact our customer service department to find a local distributor nearby. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. I'm Ron with Ideal, and I'll see you on the next one.